How are you doing? Have any of you played the game Jenga where you have to build the tower without falling apart? It's really fun, but you have to be calm and not have shaky hands. You have to be at peace. Hey, that's our live app for the month. And actually, peace is about way more than just being calm, quiet, and still. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Isn't that the way you want other people to treat you? Making peace is a great way to build a bridge to something else, instead of letting disagreement and hurt get in the way. It's a great way to treat others the way you want to be treated. We've got another super cool story coming up about someone who had to decide if she could make peace. You're going to love it. But first, we'll kick things off with some praise and worship. Come on, everyone up on your feet. Here we go on my count. Let's kick it off together. Three, two, one. Hit it.
go over our values. Our first value is love God. We love God because He loved us first. Our second value is love people. We love people because God loves all people. Our third value is have fun. We have fun because God gives us joy. Our fourth and last value is make a difference. We make a difference because Jesus did. King David was a pretty famous guy. He was chosen to be the next king of Israel when he was just a young man watching over flocks of sheep. One day, David and his men went down to the desert of Paran. They traveled near the island of wealthy men named Nabal. Nabal was very rude and mean, but he had a very wise and intelligent wife named Abigail. David and his men had showed plenty of kindness to Nabal's servants, but Nabal had refused to give them any food in return. When David's men returned and told David that Nabal, what Nabal had said, David was angry. About 400 men went with David looking for a fight. Abigail knew she had to do something to help. Maybe if she made a gift for David, she could con give, convince him to turn back instead of going after Nabal. Abigail didn't waste any time. She gathered supplies and loaded them on donkeys. She gathered bread, cakes, wheat, and grains. She told the servants to go ahead to David and his men, and she would follow them. When Abigail finally saw David and his men, they were marching through a mountain valley. She could tell that David was very angry. Let's take a look and see what happened next. What's up everybody? It's me, Jacob, and today, you're gonna help me solve a mystery. <gasps> the case of the mysterious envelope. Dun, dun, dun! What do you think it is? Is it a, a thank you gift? A prank? A peace offering? Actually, peace is what we're talking about today. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. But that doesn't get me any closer to finding out what's inside this package. I feel like I should be wearing gloves for this. Yeah. Monkey bridge? What's a monkey bridge? A few twigs and some string, but no instructions. <gasps> Another mystery. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, clearly this is a bridge building kit. Well, maybe the sticks are the decking, but how do I, maybe I'm supposed to weave it together. This doesn't make any sense. I gotta get creative. I gotta think outside the box to find a solution. Actually, that's exactly what someone in today's story did. Now, how do you build a monkey bridge? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. God had promised David would be king, but for now, King Saul ruled Israel. David lived his life on the run, followed by a group of misfits who had become friends and servants. One day, they arrived in the desert of Paran, near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal, who owned 3,000 sheep. We'll set up camp here, man. At first, Nabal's servants didn't know what to think. Too many strangers around these parts. We've had food and sheep go missing. But David's men were honorable. They didn't try to steal from the shepherds. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from any harm. Stay as long as you like, my friend. About time for sheep shearing, isn't it? Oh, yes. Nabal will hold a grand feast when it's all over. Your men have helped us, so they should share in the celebration. 
David called for ten of his men and gave them a message to send to Nabal. On it. David's messengers hurried up the mountain to Nabal's estate and were brought to stand before him. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> Nabal sneered down at the men while he continued to chew on a fine leg of mutton. David says, may you live long, may things go well with you. <laughs> Continue. Uh, he says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well and protected them. Now please be kind to my men. Please give us any food you can find for us. Nabal leapt from his seat and hurled the mutton bone across the room. Who oh, is this David? Probably a runaway servant. Why should I give bread and meat to a nobody? He had his men who come from who knows where. David's men returned to camp and delivered the news. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Men, put on your swords. We'll make Nabal wish he hadn't. At no time at all, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. It seemed there was no stopping a battle. But Nabal's wife, Abigail, was far wiser than her husband. A servant told her what he had done. David sent messengers asking for food, but Nabal shouted and was rude to them. Go on. The whole time we were near them, David's men were good to us. They, they were like a wall keeping us safe. You've got to do something now or terrible trouble will come. There's no time to waste. Abigail quickly directed her servants to gather supplies and put them on donkeys. 200 loaves of bread. Check. Five sheep. Check. One bushel of cooked grain. Check. 100 cakes of raisins and 200 cakes of figs. Check and check. Well, you go on ahead, I'll follow. The donkeys loaded with good food started down the mountain. Abigail got on her donkey and followed. From the valley, David and his men were approaching. Everything we've done has been worthless. I watched over this fellow's property, but he's paid me back evil for good. We'll wipe him out. <laughs> As David's anger grew though, he spotted something along the path. A pack of donkeys. What's this? Well, it looks like they're carrying something. Food for a feast, I'd say. Behind the pack of donkeys, Abigail prepared for what lay ahead. <sighs> I must stop this. The moment Abigail saw David, she slid off her donkey and fell face down on the ground before his feet. Please, let me speak. Let me take the blame for Nabal's actions. Abigail raised her eyes just enough to notice David's surprised face. He nodded. Don't pay attention to Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get to see your messengers, but I've brought a gift for you. Right now, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. Let the Lord deal with your enemies. Abigail rose to her feet. David and his men listened, surprised by the strength of her message. You fight the Lord's battle, so he will give your family line a kingdom that will last. He'll make you ruler of Israel. And when he does, you won't have a heavy load on your mind about killing people with no reason. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail took a deep breath and waited. David smiled. Give praise to the Lord. He sent you to find me. May he bless you for this. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. David's men unloaded the food that Abigail had brought. Go home in peace. I'll do what you have asked. Abigail made her way back up the hillside to her home. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard yet creative work of making peace. In the end, Nabal paid the high price for his foolish anger, but God blessed Abigail. The fight between Nabal and David wasn't Abigail's problem, but she didn't use that as an excuse she got involved, she acted fast, and she found a creative solution. You see, just because something isn't your problem doesn't mean you can't get involved. God has given each one of us unique talents and unique ways of seeing things. So, if you see people in a fight and you're the only one who can see a way to make peace, you should help them solve that mystery. 
Jesus showed us how important making peace was to him when he gave his life on the cross. We can make peace with others by being part of the solution. You can help calm an argument between two people by making them laugh. You can suggest solutions to problems that others might not see. Or if a fight looks like it might get dangerous, you can find a grown-up to help keep the peace. The one thing to remember today is this. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. So this week, be on the lookout for creative ways to build bridges between people in your small part of the world. I'm gonna have to get pretty creative myself. Here's what the bridge is supposed to look like. Mystery solved. You know, if that bridge was full-sized, I could cross an entire canyon on that one thin little rope. But first I'd need to solve my fear of heights problem. Dun, dun, dun. I'll see you next time. In the end, Nabal died. He paid a high price for his foolish and angry response to David. But God blessed Abigail. She had chosen to humble herself and do hard work of making peace. Just like our memory verse tells us to do, it reads, So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Abigail understood that. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. Abigail wasn't the one who caused the problem. She wasn't involved in the fight, but she got involved so that she could make peace. She chose to be a part of the solution. Way to go, Abigail! We see through her example that God can work through each of us to make peace between others. Remember, we have the best example of this in Jesus. Jesus loved people so much that he gave his life for us. We can follow his example and help find the solution to what's wrong, even when we aren't involved in the argument. Let's talk to God and ask him to help us bring peacemakers with our friends, our family members, and anyone else who has a conflict. Will you pray with me? Bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for the story of Abigail and for the reminder that we can be a part of the solution. You can use us to make peace, even if we're not the ones who have an argument to begin with. Help us look for ways that we can make peace and show the people in our lives that we care about them. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you again next week. Bye.